for the tenure, for example, where's the top going to be and when is the top going to hit that hurts? Um, I think we're a ways out until we see that top. I think, uh, I think you still have the U.S. market that stands out as kind of the high-yielding market. So the demand factor from outside the U.S. is still going to be very significant. And in the event that we see equities kind of rally into year end, we'd expect to see pension funds back in buying. So I think it's going to be until next year, until we um, have more guidance around the inflation picture. And if we really expect to see inflation consistently in that 2.5% kind of area and wages growing at 3% north of that, I expect the tenure to, to, to increase pretty significantly up into the high threes, maybe 4% by year and next year. And we're going to move to Europe in just a second. Before we go, though, uh, there's two uh, stories in the market looking at exactly the same data. One is that we have a really strong economy in the U.S. Everything's going to be fine. The other one is uh, liquidity withdrawal, full stop. Which one do you sit on? So in terms of um, U.S. only or U.S. and Europe? Globally. Um, what the market is contending with. So the, the market's contending with how long will U.S. exceptionalism continue? Um, the bottom line is there are some warning signs outside the U.S. We've seen emerging market growth slow. We've seen European growth slow pretty significantly. So the gap between the U.S. and other countries has widened pretty significantly. So expect withdrawal out of the U.S and then continued very easy monetary policy outside the U.S. And the question is, how do you then invest? I think that um, the, the big um, market that is not pricing in um, kind of this dynamic is, is, is Europe and the European bond market. Um, in general, they're pricing in that the uh, ECB is going to be removing accommodation over time, as you mentioned. We don't think that's going to be the case. There may be one hike, and we think they likely stop. We think that growth, you've seen a significant slowdown there. The slowdown in China, the concern around trade is having a bigger impact on Europe than it is on the U.S. And uh, as a result, we expect to see growth trend down to the low 1% area in, in Europe. And then inflation is uh, likely to be well below 1%. Rates are not going up in the near future in, in, uh, in Europe, and you have a uh, boon that's out there that's yielding something very positive in an environment where you can borrow at negative yields. That's actually a very good total return for an investor. So, two problems. So, this is really interesting information because, uh, like I said, for the crypto market, if the market is stable and uh, what he's predicting that inflation will stay low, um, then uh, I don't see much growth for cryptocurrency, and it could be flat for another year or two before there's more adoption. But the one question that they're not answering is the increasing debt and what's going to happen with a country like the U.S., where it's supposed to be stable, but if the interest rates do go up to 3 4%, how are they going to manage the debt payments, especially if uh, a lot of this growth, a lot of this uh, exuberance and pricing in the market was due to the fact there was so much liquidity from borrowing and that is a major question um, for everyone here to pay attention to and decide but let me know your thoughts on this and what you think and I will talk to you soon